you can adjust the tool settings for your sculpt by going into the attributes panel right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to our create menu, go to mesh, and I'm just gonna pull in and grab a plane. That way we have something to sculpt on in order to demonstrate some of these settings. Okay, so let me actually go to our mesh and let's go up a few subdivision levels just so we have a little bit of resolution to work with. You can check the resolution by pressing W on your keyboard to see the wireframe. Okay, over here you can see we have size and strength. Now size is going to be the size of your brush. You can see that on your viewport. You can press B on your keyboard, hold down that key, uh, that key B, and then go up and down with your, your tablet or your, um, or your mouse, and you can see that increase in size. You can also adjust the bracket or you can adjust the brush size with the bracket keys. You can do that as well. Now the minimum strength, what we have here, is the strength of the amount of sculpt. And let me go to sculpt here, undo a bit. And you can see the strength. Uh, right now I'm using a, a Wacom tablet. So there is a pressure sensitivity. As I press harder, I can get a real deep sculpt using this tool. And we can bring down the strength. And you can see now you can have some lighter, very light kind of sculpts, uh, sculpting marks that you can use with this tool. Now mirror is going to be you can see the cursor on both sides. So whatever you do on this side will translate over to this side. So if you sculpt anything that you do, and let me turn up the strength a bit, anything you do on this side will translate over and mirror over to the other side. And you can do that with not just the X, but you can do it on the Y and the Z if you need to. I'm gonna turn that off for now. You can invert the function. So we were sculpting, digging into the mesh, but you can also pull it out by using the invert. So say you're using this tool and you mainly wanna pull something out in order to make some wrinkles instead of using the control, which reverses it. So if, I'm, if I have it set normal without the invert and I, it digs in, I can hold down control to pull out. If you, don't fi if you find yourself using the pull out part of the tool more often, you can just have that invert function instead of holding down the control key. Okay, now we have use stamp. Now, if we go to a stamp here, and I'm gonna go to say, um, I'm gonna go to this tool here. And I randomize. Look. You can see I can have this sculpt with this stamp will randomize that that effect by using these little levers here. Now if I go down here and I hover over you can see the image that it uses uh, cliffface.tiff so it kind of gives it sort of a rocky kind of look and you can adjust this by using the rotation so it randomizes in the in as it rotates you can go the uh, X and, and Z or excuse me uh, the up and down 
So you can, ha there's a degree of control of which how you have it randomized. And you also have scale. So you can adjust the scale as well. And you can adjust the, this will be the black and white. So that's the alpha of which it raises up and what it keeps at a lower level. So you have an adjustment there as well. So you can use the stamps and have a degree of randomization, or you can just keep it off and just have it sculpt as normal as well. Now you have the stamp spacing. That's this uh, space between where the effect is on your on your mesh. So you can have you can really increase the distance. if you need to do that. And let me bring this down. I think it was around six or seven, I think. And you also have snap to curve. So if you have curves, this will snap directly to that. Now we also have a really nice uh, function called steady stroke. Now steady stroke is, now let me go back and I'm gonna turn off my stamp. So this is a little bit clearer to see. When you have steady stroke, you can see this little line that comes up. And right now I have this set. Pretty high, so I'm gonna bring this down. Bring down the size a little bit. Now, the steady, the steady stroke will give you this line to give you a more natural curve that you can add into your, your sculpt. Say you want to do something a little bit more fine line where you don't want to have your hands sort of giving it too much of a variation, a little too shaky. What you can do is have the steady stroke on and it'll give you that extra fine curve that you want and you can increase that uh, that line if you really want to get a really nice curve now where this is difficult is making real tight turns so if you're going to use this you want to keep in mind that you're not going to be able to give the, the best curve so you're going to have to use a shorter line if you're going to do that if you're going to make a really tight corners you may have to um use these have the steady stroke stroke off so it's a very useful tool very useful when you want to have some fine curves fine lines now we have some uh section here where we remember the size we can orient towards the surface we have pen pressure minimum size and pen pressure minimum strength so the minimum size is the is the size that will the minimum that it will be for the lightest pen pressure and minimum strength is the lightest or excuse me is the strongest that it will be at the lightest pen pressure. So if you bring this all the way up, if you bring this strength all the way up, you basically have no pen pressure. It acts exactly how it would act as if you had a mouse, where there's no, there's no pen pressure sensitivity. So you're gonna keep it somewhere, somewhere in the middle in order to uh, in order to work best so you definitely want to take a look at these settings down here for the when you're using a tablet 
because you might be using your your sculpt and you might be sculpting something and you're not getting the the pressure that you want take a look at this at this setting and to see if you're you're getting that getting what you want now we also have fall off fall off if you um adjust this will give you a, a setting that the result of what you have excuse me the the result from the center of your brush towards the outer edge of your brush and how that affects the the sculpt so it will if you have your your center point and it irradiates outwards towards the edge of your of your brush so if you have it very sharp what you can do is you can see that as it affects the edge of your your brush so you're going to have a very sharp kind of curve instead of a more of a bell curve which gives it sort of a, a soft feathered edge at the end of uh, this uh, the circle of your brush so if I um, really kind of dig in you can see that with this particular setting and let me reset and now let me press that over so you can see the the harsh edge at the end here and how that affects this the result of your your sculpt and you also have the ability to reset so if you are adjusting and you're making uh, adjustments to your 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 uh, your brush you realize you don't really like what you did you can just go back and reset that that's uh, that brush back to its its default settings i put a link in the description to download project files you can also go to astronomic3d.com to download project files from this tutorial and all the tutorials that i've made so far thanks for watching